Hey, hey, how you going? Back again. Does anyone know what this is? Noahidism? We all see, know what that means. Well, it has several different meanings now. Noahidism, or Noachidism, is a monolithic Jewish religious movement based upon the seven laws of Noah and the traditional interpretations within the Orthodox Judaism. According to the Jewish law, non-Gentiles Jews, Gentiles, are not obliged to convert to Judaism, but they are required to observe the seven laws of Noah to be assured a place of the world to come. The final word of the righteous. The divinely ordained penalty for violating any of the Noahide laws is discussed in the Talmud. But, in practical terms, it is subject to working legal system which is established in the society by the society at large. Those who subscribe to the observance of the Nahide Covenant are referred to as... I can't say that, sorry. Or oh, Sons of Noah or Noachites. The modern Noachite movement was founded in the 1990s by Orthodox rabbis from Israel, mainly tied to the Shabab, Lavovich and religious Zionist organizations, including the Temple Institute. Historically, the Hebrew term Sons of Noah has been applied to all non-Jews as descendants of Noah. However, nowadays it's primarily used to refer specifically to the righteous Gentiles who observe the seven laws of Noah. Noahide communities have spread and developed primarily in the United States, United Kingdom, Latin America, Nigeria, Philippines, Russia. According to a Noahide source in 2018, there are over 20,000 official Noahides around the world. And the country with the greatest number is Philippines. Hmm. Does anyone know what's been happening in the Philippines the last few years? Yeah, uh, the Rainbow Convent. This was given over in the book of Genesis, chapter 9. Seven laws of Noah, the seven commandments of the Noah Convent, emulated in the Babylon Tabernacle. Do not worship idols, do not curse God, do not murder, do not commit adultery or sexual immorality, do not steal, do not eat flesh torn from a living animal and established courts of justice. The concept of righteous Gentiles has few precedents in the history of Judaism, primarily during biblical times and the Roman dominion in the of the Mediterranean in the Hebrew Bible. It is reported that the legal systems of Goshevet, Hebrew, foreigner, alien, resident, lit, resident alien, was granted to those Gentiles, non-Jews, living in the land of Israel who didn't want to convert to Judaism but agreed to observe the seven laws of Noah. The god fears of the Roman Empire are also each an example of the non-Jews being included within the Jewish community without converting to Judaism. During the golden age of the Jewish culture on the Iberian Peninsula, the medieval Jewish philosopher and rabbi that guy, wrote in the Hakka Legal Code, the Mishnah Torah, that non-Jews must perform exclusively the seven laws of Noah and refrain from studying the Torah. So, or performing any Jewish condiment, including resting on the Shabbat. However, Mondermines also state that if Gentiles want to perform any Jewish commandment besides the seven laws of Noah according to the correct procedure, they are not prevented from doing so according to them. Teaching non-Jews to follow the seven laws of Noah is incumbent on all Jews, a commandment in itself. Nevertheless, the majority of the rabbinic authorities over the centuries have rejected his opinion and dominated the Heraclitic consensus has always been that Jews are not required to spread the Noahide laws to non-Jews. The modern Noahide movement, this guy, I have trouble saying his name, sorry. A rabbi encouraged his followers on many occasions to preach the seven laws of Noah, devoting some of his addresses on the subterrains of code. Since the 1990s, Orthodox rabbis from Israel, most notably those affiliated to Shabab, a religious Zionist organizations, including the Temple Institute, have set up modern Noahide movement. The Noahide organizations, led by religious Zionists and Orthodox rabbis, are aimed at non-Jews to all side among them and commit them to follow the Noahide laws. However, these religious Zionists and Orthodox rabbis that guide the modern Noahide movement are often affiliated with the Third Temple movement. Expound a racist and a supremacist ideology 
which consisted in the belief that the Jewish people of God's chosen nation and radically superior to the non-Jews, and mentor Noahides because they believed the Messianic era will begin with the rebuilding of the Third Temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem to reinstitute the Jewish priesthood along with the practical of ritual sacrifices and the establishment of the Jewish theocracy in Israel supported by the communities of Noahides. There are two different conceptions of Noahidism in Orthodox Judaism. This movement, where, whose members observe the seven laws of Noah, or laws only, and hold that the remaining commandments do not apply to them. This is the view of Shavad, Lovovich, and a few other movements. This means that Noahites may not observe the Sabbath, study the Torah, except for the seven Noahide laws, etc. The movement whose members hold that they can adhere completely to Judaism to learn from the Jews and together promote a world to come, but without becoming part of the Jewish people, i.e. without having to convert to Judaism. After Noah accept the obligatory seven commandments, they can, if they so desire, carry out the rest of the Jewish commandments, including studying the Torah, observing the Sabbath, celebrating Jewish holidays, etc. This view is held, for example, by this guy and... David Novak, a professor of Jewish theology and ethics at the University of Toronto, has denounced the modern Noahide movement by stating, if Jews are telling the Gentiles what to do, is it a form of imperialism? High Council of Ben Noah, set up to represent the Noahide communities around the world, was endorsed by a group that claimed to be the new China. The High Court consists of a group of Noahides who, at the request of Nascent, Sandron gathered on Israel on the 10th of January 2006 to be recognized as an international Noahide organization for the purpose of serving as a bridge between the nascent Sheridan and the Noahides worldwide. There were 10 initial members who flew to Israel to pledge upon the seven laws of Noah and to conduct themselves under the authority of the Noahide Beth and Religious Court. The idea for the council was to first conceived by Rabbi Avram Tolendo he, as well as many under others, understood the Noahides, like Jews, need a body of recognized leaders and scholars to whom they can turn to for guidance in their study and observance in the Torah, and who can help them unify the communities around the world. To this end, suitable candidates were sought out, who will be willing and able to have established such a body. These nominees were brought together in mid-2005 by the personal invitation of and under the supervision of an authorised representative of the controversial attempt to revive forming a proto-Noahite council. The founding proto-council members then appeared before the same body in Jerusalem on the 9th of January 2006. The council is not Bendin, Bethdin, and does not have any legal power to make rulings. Rather, it states it's an autonomous body of Noahide leaders and scholars with religious supervision and guidance, remote education, unification, edification of Noahide and Noahide communities around the world. The current members of the council were personally invited to take part in the endeavour. However, the members of the council were not ordained, rather, having been invited to participate, they agreed to work together to establish this council. The council was behind the establishment of the wilkie.noah.org website. Mer, Cain and Shalomone, I can't say these names, I apologise, organised one of the first Noahide conferences in the 1980s and 1990. He was a keynote speaker at the first international conference of the descendants of Noah, the first Noahide gathering in Fort Worth, Texas, after the assassination of this guy. So he was assassinated that same year. The Temple Institute, which advocates to rebuild the third Jewish temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, started to promote the Noahide laws as well. The movement has been one of the most active in the Noahide outreach, believing that there is spiritual and secret value for non-Jews, at least simply acknowledging the Noahide laws. In 1982, Shabbat Lovitch had a reference to the Noahide laws enshrined in the U.S. Presidential Proclamation the proclamation of 492, signed by then U.S. President Ronald Reagan, the United States Congress recalling House Joint Resolution 447 in celebration with his 80th birthday proclaimed on the 4th of April 1982 as National Day of Reflection. 
1989 and 1990, they had another reference to the Nahide laws enshrined in the U.S. Presidential Proclamation. The Proclamation 5956, signed by then-President George H.W. Bush, the United States Congress, recalling House Joint Resolution 173, in addition celebration to his 87th birthday, proclaimed in 16th of April 1989 and 6th of April 1990 as Education Day in USA. Okay, so Education Day in USA is about Noah Hyde. Mm -hmm. January 2004, the spiritual leader of the Druze community in Israel, Sheikh, met with conservative Shabbat Lubavitch to sign a declaration calling on all non-Jews in Israel to observe the Noah Hyde laws. The mayor of Arab city, Shia Abman, where Muslims, Christians, Druze communities live side by side, also signed the document. In March 2016, can't say that, sorry, declared during the sermon that Jewish law requires that only non-Jews allowed to live in Israel are obliged to follow the Nahad laws. According to Jewish law, it's forbidden for a non-Jew to live in the land of Israel unless he has accepted the seven Nahad laws. If the non-Jew is unwilling to accept these laws, then we can send him to Saudi Arabia when there will be full true redemption. We will do this. Yosef Father added, non-Jews shouldn't live in the land of Israel. If our hand were firm, if we had the power to rule, then no Jews must not live in Israel. But our hand is not firm, who otherwise be the servants, who will help our helpers. This is why we leave them in Israel. Yosef's sermon sparked outrage in Israel and was fiercely criticised by several human rights associations, non-government organisations and members of the Knesset. Jonathan Granblatt. Anti-Defamations -Def League CEO, National Director Carl Neural, Anti-Defamation -Def League Israel Office Acting Director issued a strong denunciation of Yusuf's sermon. In a statement by Chief Rabbi Yusuf is shocking and unacceptable. It's unconscionable that Chief Rabbi, an official representative of the State of Israel, would express such intolerant and ignorant views about Israel's non-Jewish population, including the millions of non-Jewish citizens. As a spiritual leader, Rabbi Yusuf should be using his influence to preach tolerance and compassion towards others regardless of their faith and not seek to exclude them. It means such a large segment of Israelis. Call upon Chief Rabbi to retract his statements and apologize for any cause, offense caused by his comments. Okay. This is the first proclamation of Ronald Reagan. He proclaimed Jewish no hide laws is the morality of America and all faiths. Public Law 10214, which states that the Jewish Noahide laws are the foundation upon which American civilization was found and that it's our responsibility to educate America and even the world, so as to return them to these laws was signed in 1991. However, this law was preceded by proclamations of other presidents which endorsed the Noahide laws and Rabbi and Shabbat Rabbi that said that non-Jews, like all of creation, existed only for the benefits of Jews. In 1982, then President Ronald Reagan signed Proclamation 4921, in which he stated that the Noah Hoard laws are uh, the moral foundation of America's character, that the Noahide laws are a moral code for all, regardless of faith. He also praised the Labrach movement and Rabbi Shiism for their example in educating about the Jewish Noahide laws. He then requested Congress to sign Joint Resolution 477, which celebrates Rabbi's birthday as the National Day of Reflection. The Lower High Law states that adulterers and even Christians are to be killed. How on earth can a Jewish Noah Hyde Law be a moral code regardless for all, regardless of which faith? Further, Rabbi Shir himself wrote to Rogan Reagan on the signing of the proclamation, thanking him for affirming the eternal validity of the Nahide laws and the parentness added with all their ramification, which would obviously include the death penalty for homosexuals, Christians, pagans, atheists, and so much more. A National Day of Reflection by the President of the United States of America, a publication. Amid the distractions and the concern of our daily existence, it is appropriate that America pause to reflect upon the ancient ethical principles and moral values which are the foundation of our character and nation. We seek to steadfast pursue the benefits of education, but the education must be more than factual enlightenment, it must enrich the character as well as the mind. 
One shining example for the people of all faiths of what education ought to be is that provided by the Ludbridge Movement, headed by Rabbi, a worldwide spiritual leader who will celebrate his 80th birthday on the 4th of April 1982. He, the Rabbi's work stands as a reminder that knowledge is an unworthy goal unless it is accompanied by a moral and spiritual wisdom and understanding. He has provided a vivid example of the eternal validity of the seven Noahide laws, a moral code for all of us regardless of religious faith. May he go from strength to strength. In recognition of the Lubrecker's 80th birthday, the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States and Congress have assembled have issued House Joint Resolution 447 to set aside 4th of April 1982 as National Day of Reflection. Now, therefore, I, Ronald Reagan, President of the United States of America, do hereby proclaim 4th of April 1982 as National Day of Reflection, in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand on the third day of April in the year of the Lord 1982 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 206th. Ronald Reagan. And then the rabbi responded with, by focusing attention on the ancient ethical principles and moral values which are founded foundation of our character as a nation on the time-honoured truth and that education must be more than fractional enlightenment, it must enrich the character as well as the mind, while reaffirming the eternal value of the God given seven Noahide laws with all their ramifications for the peoples of all faith, you have expressed more forcefully the real spirit of the American nation. Now, a similar um, thing was brought in um, with Paul and the apostles. In Paul's thinking, instead of humanity divided as Israel and the nations, which is the classic understanding of Judaism, we have Israel after the flesh, i.e. the Jewish people, non-Jews who he calls the nations, i.e. Gentiles, and the new people called the Church of God, made of all whom he design designates as in Christ, 1 Corinthians 10.20. So, have the Noahide laws been recognised by any governments? 27th of December 2017. 102nd U.S. Congress, 91 to 92, House Joint Resolution, 104.ENR, designating March 26, 1991 as Education Day. Congress recognised the historical tradition of ethical values and principles which are the basis of a civilised society and upon which a great nation was founded. These ethical values and principles that have been the bedrock of a society from the dawn of civilization when they were known as the seven Noahide laws. The university, the universality of these principles and global import was recognised in 1982 by President Ronald Reagan when he spoke of the eternal validity of the seven Noahide laws as a moral code for all of us, regardless of religious faith, proclamation on the National Day of Reflected 4th of April 1982. Seven years later, in 1989, Poppy Bush, not only proclaim this, but these biblical values are the foundation of a civilized society, but he also recognized that a society that fails to recognize or heed to them cannot endure. He understand, understood how these principles of moral and ethical conducts have formed the basis for all civilization come to us, in part from centuries of seven Noahide laws. And in doing so, he noted their origins. The Noahide laws are actually seven commandments given to men by God as recorded in the Old Testament. Proclamation 5956 Education Day USA 1989 and 1990 102 Stat 3016 14th of April 1989. Both the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States Congress in 1991 on a unanimous bipartisan basis further recognized how the historical tradition or ethical values and principles upon our great nation was founded have been the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization when they were known as the seven Noahide laws the American Congress understood how the most recent awakening of these principles has resulted in a crisis that the Belgian and threatened the fabric of civilized society thus they warned us without the ethical values and principles of the edifice of civilization stands in serious pearl of returning to the chaos Public Law 102.14, 102nd Congress, first, section, first se session, H.J. 
Resolution 104. Other world leaders have joined the call to further observance and acknowledge these laws. For example, Herman van Rompuy, President of the European Ro Union, wrote in July 2014 that he seeks greater dissemination of universal values known as the Nalahide Laws. And Major General Michael Jeffrey, Governor General of Australia, laminating family breakdowns and drug alcohol abuse in modern society in a 2011 wrote that he believed that observing the fundamental values of Anahide laws can be an antidote to such ills of society. We only need to look at the havoc in which we find ourselves living today in order to recognise the validity of the truth of these assertions. Hmm. So the US government can now legally kill Christians for crime of worshipping Jesus Christ. A diabolic de deception has been perpetrated on the American people by their own leaders, senators and congressmen who have sold their soul to the devil. It's more than New World Order. On March 5th, 1991, the House of Representatives and on March 7th, ninety one in the US Senate, without any knowledge of or input by the people of the United States, U.S. Senators and Congressmen passed a law that's so outrageous and frankly unconstitutional that it forces American people to be bound by a set of monotonous rules called the Noahide Laws, rules that make the belief of Jesus Christ a crime punishable by the decapitation by guillotine. 20th March 1991, President Bush, supposed a Christian, signed the bill into law. Before you respond, no, that cannot be, not in a free country, let me explain. So it was passed there. I don't know if you know, but several years ago, Obama ordered thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of guillotines. A deep background source has provided us with a document detailing a distribution of genocide machines, guillotines across America in preparation for a left-wing coup attempt. They will see NT from Black Lives Matter terrorists literally behaving conservatives, Christians and white people. And news comes off the, on the heels a left-wing terrorist pacing guilty in front of the home of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, stating, when they become threatened and we have no voice, the knives come out, according to Breitbart. It's not mere symbolism. The radical left intends to overthrow private property, private businesses across America, mass murder, all political leaders and business leaders who support capitalism and nationally and authoritarian communist regime that will mass slaughter millions of America. It won't just happen in America, it'll be worldwide. Those that don't die of the jab will die. Well, like, if they don't bend down, they'll die of that. Here's a video of the left-wing terrorists threatening to kill Jeff Bezos and virtually all other capitalists in America if they, as they're part of their violent insurrection attempt. Over the weekend, a group of 100 left-wing terrorists formed a mob that threatened to burn down the house of a St. Louis couple who now famously defended their home with a pistol and an AR-15. Notably, this couple supports Black Lives Matter and donates thousands of dollars to the Democrats, yet even that wasn't enough to keep the violent mob away from their own property. The lunatic left always eats its own sooner or later because they're all deranged and mentally ill sociopaths. This shows that Americans are uh, arming up as they watch the violent left-wing terrorist group, which includes the left-wing media that provides narrative cover for the terrorists initiate the takedown plan for America. Notably, Jeff Bezos has bent over backwards to virtual signal left of spending conservatives' books and transforming Amazon and Audible, owned by Amazon, into something of an altar of worship for Black Lives Matter terrorists and who are destroying America, but it's not enough. The mob wants Bezos' head and they aren't stopping there. Now we've acquired a document from Deep Background Source that details estimate counts of guillotines being prepositioned across America, ready to be flown mass murder convinced conversions, Christians, whites and Trump supporters who end up in FEMA camps. Why guillotines? It's a symbol of the socialist left-wing French Revolution who used guillotines to mass murder thousands of political dissidents followed by the murder of revolutionaries. According to this document, thousands of guillotines have already been placed in storage under control of military bases in FEMA camps. Here are some of the cities where the guillotines are reportedly being stored right now. Seattle, Washington, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Topco, Kansas, Boston, Massachusetts, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Newark, New Jersey, Williamton, Delaware, Providence, Rhode Island, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Broyes, Idaho, Las Vegas, Nevada, Salt Lake City, Utah, Phoenix, Arizona, Billings, Montana, Denver, Colorado, Madison, Wisconsin, Chicago, Illinois, 
Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Atlanta, Jacksonville, New York City, Harrisburg, Lexington, Durham, Charleston, Dallas, St. Paul's, Des Moines, St. Louis, Little Rock, New Orleans, Portland, Oakland, Detroit, South Bend, Columbus, Louisville, Nashville, Jackson, Mobile, Portland, Concord, and Burlington. And here's Brighton's video that adds additional information into the guillotine stockpiling. Um, in addition to the guillotines, many of the locations also um, boast corpse processing facilities, which include large numbers of the same type of incinerators, which were ordered in large numbers under cover of pandemic. According to the source, there are literally thousands of incineration ovens positioned across America ready to process the bodies after they're decapitated. The document also warns of 500,000 trained troops that have been positioned near the southern border. I'll leave the links in the description for you here. FEMA ordered uh, 102,000 boxcars with shackles and guillotines. Why modern guillotines on military bases throughout America? Revelation 24 6. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. They used guillotines for governmental purposes, was lobbied and passed in the US Congress. The information received is fifth, more than that. Yeah. Are the beheadings by today meant to desensitise us against the US doing it in the future? There are over 800 prison camps in the United States. They're already fully operation, manned and staffed. Probably full now with homeless. They have three layer boxcars transporting prisoners. I'll leave the links in the description. I'll leave the links in the description for you. I can't play any more of it. I'll probably get a strike. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I've, I know a lot about it. I've um, known about this since 2005 in America, what they're doing. So to wrap it up, you know, I had laws. All people have a share in the world to come, heaven. Our action and need, deeds determine the size and the place of this portion. While the Jews have 613 laws, there are seven Noahide laws which have been derived from ancient sacred Jewish texts. These laws apply to everyone and they are expounded upon by numerous sages. The seven Noahide laws, known as the seven universal laws, cover the basic of living a life that is ethical and meaningful. Laws such as do not murder and you shall have just laws give people the ability to work alongside each other in a peaceful manner. Though these laws seem very easy to follow, there is a tremendous amount of detail involved in pro properly following each law. With proper spiritual guidance, a person can grow closer to God and become a truly righteous person by observing the spe seven special laws. The Nahad laws can be observed by anyone. The only exception is the Jewish people who are bound by the 613 laws from the Torah. In today's modern times, it's easy to fall into everything that revolves around me mentally. This type of thinking is detrimental to leading a righteous and meaning life. All the actions and thoughts of a self-centered person are the one of the largest causes for the spiritual and ethical decline that people have been seeing. Back in the 1950s, having a child without being married was unheard of. Women dressed modestly, not showing off their bodies for everyone to stare at. It was a different world completely. We live in a world that is driven by the media, and the media only broadcasts ideas about immorality, drinking, drugs, smoking, how having a child is a bad thing, and the whole list of other unpleasant things items. Using the Noahide laws as a guide can benefit any person connecting with the Creator, has positive effects on people's lives. Seeing a person going from a life begging for money and the next day being hired as a radio broadcaster is unbelievable, but this is what God does for people that follows His laws. Stories about people who have become sons of God and found more meaning and improved their lives by observing the Noahide laws can be found here. I'll leave links in the description. 
So yeah, it's pretty deep. Wherever you are in the world, if you're still watching, please, thank you. Raise your vibrations and just hang in there, you know. If uh, the devil can trick one third of the angels in heaven, don't you think he can trick you? Alright, much love. Bye now.